Hello, I'm back and uh, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Uh, I'm going to do some more of these stencil cutouts. See, these are made from some scrap copy paper. So uh, before I do anything, I will charge the plate with some chromium oxide green. Make sure this is not clogged up here. And some green gold. I gave this uh, jelly plate a good bath in the sink, so uh, it's nice and clean. Sometimes it's not enough to clean it on the printing table. Um, you need to do both sides. And fortunately, this is still small enough to fit in my sink. And I'm using the heel of the, using the very edge of the brayer as a, like a stick, making my marks. Mm -hmm. some interesting marks with the brayer. And uh, I'm going to start laying on my cut pieces again in a fairly random Okay, that should do for now. Just gently lay them flat against the plate. And this is the print that I'm going to use. This is the last print uh, from the previous video. This is really a ghost print where I pick up uh, leftover paint. Uh, and uh, I'll see what I can come up with.
So where the uh, paper was acts as a mask. Okay, so here is the result. And where I did those special marks with the brayer, you have these striations here. And uh, the result is an interesting combination of shapes and layers and colors. So I may add some more layers later, but uh, I'm going to let this sit for a while and dry. Okay, now I'm going to apply some cadmium orange in certain spots. I'm going to be using a skinnier brayer. deliberately making these lines here. This will be a third layer on top of this. Before I do that, I'm going to add some more. This is all very spontaneous. This is not planned. Um, That's why I like to have these pre-cut stencils on hand because I may just decide to use them at the last minute or last second. See what we got. Nice combination. so you can see the detail. I'm going to 
gonna set this aside to dry again. Now, um, never make the mistake of letting these guys dry on the plate. Uh, they're going to be very difficult to remove if they dry because like I said earlier, the acrylic paint is like a glue. see here I have cut these pieces of copy paper as uh, masks and I'm going to mask out these areas of the print that I like um, I'm going to arrange them like so now one um, one note about this arrangement is when I lay this on the plate, it has to be in reverse. So in order to do that, I'm uh, applying the, enlisting the help of a piece of acetate. Now this is actually a piece of plastic that the jelly print came with and I save it because every time I put the jelly plate away I have to put the plastic film back just to keep it uh, from sticking to the uh, clamshell package. So what I'm going to do with this is trace the shapes just to give a rough idea and reverse it on my plate. I'll, I'll show it to you. So here's a Sharpie and I'm just going to roughly make an outline of where the stencil should go. Because you have to remember in mono printing, everything is in reverse. So should you write numbers or letters on your plate? When you print them, they're all backwards. So um, I'm using this as a guide. When I flip this over, it will land in the place that I want. So uh, I'll show you in a moment. Let me slide this out. this piece of plastic and this is the reverse Do 
this one. And then this one. And this one. Now it doesn't have to be super perfect as long as it lands in the neighborhood. This one. Oh, wrong piece. So I have my, this is my cheat sheet. And so now my pieces are in the right place. So uh, for this particular print, I'm going to use phthalo blue. combination of phthalo blue and a little bit of black. little brayer okay just trying to fill in the places where there's no paper As a final touch, I'm going to do some lines like I usually do. Okay. 
Okay. It's a little easier to take them off because these are larger pieces. There's a little little pieces that are very delicate are more difficult. Alright, so now we have our plate all charged up. that phthalo blue and black on top of this um, it will tone it down a little bit and there'll be a nice balance of light and dark so uh, here goes and this is a unusual example where I have to be careful of where I place the stencil. Usually in the other ones, I'm kind of spontaneous and carefree about putting the stencils wherever they go, but since I'm doing several layers, I have to place the stencil where it will be most effective. You'll see when I pull this print. Okay, it's a moment of truth. I like the contrast, it's very effective. Yep. Like this. Here, I'll show you. It's a little more vibrant because there's a contrast between the dark tail blue and these bright almost neon colors of the orange and green and uh, here's a close-up it almost looks like a woodcut where you have the texture of the wood that's the great thing about printmaking that is that you can create all these interesting textures with very simple materials so i'm going to put this aside and let this dry So um, I'm not going to pull a ghost print out of this. I don't think it's going to be effective. So uh, if you like this little demo, please share and click on the subscribe button. And um, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.